Hi guys, Marika here with another card tutorial. Today I'm going to take polka dot opini and make her a polar bear. So um, I started by printing her with a very very light outline because then I can add details that pass the lines um, without being too noticeable. Uh, then I'm going in with a mechanical pencil. I have a photo that I just googled from YouTube or Google from YouTube, Google from Google and uh, with a polar bear and then I'm just uh, kind of figuring out how I want it. I changed the nose a little bit. It doesn't look as much as a nose but it's more of a teddy bear nose. But I still wanted to have a bit of an outline. Then I'm going in with my needle eraser and removes most of the lines. I'm doing this because I'm going to color with Copix and Copix covers uh, the um, lead pen so after you colored with Copix you can't uh, remove those lines. So um, then I'm using my um, multi-liner by Copic also to kind of outline that what I sketched or where I want it to be black which is in the mouth around the nose and the kind of eye parts. I'm going in with the E40s mapping out all my shadows and then I remember I forgot the ears so I'm adding cute little uh, bear ears that's poking out of her little hat then going again over with my little eraser. This time I'm not doing any black lines on the ears themselves because they are not black on a polar bear. So I just want to give the dimension and the coloring of the um, little polar bear. Then I'm using my E40s, E42, E41 and E40 and a little bit of the colorless blender to color the little polar bear. Um, I'm starting out by just adding the shadows to give the dimension to get her to have that little snout. Is it called a snout? I think it's called a snout. Um, and then I'm adding the lighter details with a little bit of feathering and then going back in with um, the darker colors to feather it to look like she has so making small, 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 small lines with my Copics. Then I'm taking my grace, which is the warm grace. I'm adding a dimension to her little nose, going back with the E40s to her hair. And here I'm using the same E40s, but I am giving her a little bit more of the darker colors in the hair than she had in her face. And therefore the hair will look slightly slightly darker than her face. Then I'm doing the E40s on the little teddy bear she has on her little sleigh there because I thought it would be cute to have like mama bear and, and baby bear. Um, for her kind of fluffy things I'm using the dot technique with my warm grays. So basically just making smaller and bigger dots. I'm using bigger dots where it's supposed to be darker and lighter, smaller dots where it's supposed to be lighter. And then I'm going in with the um, W1 and W00 for, to um, add to those details. I'm also using some shadowing onto the sleigh, onto her shoes and some striping with those same greys. Um, I really like the warm greys and they kind of fit it in with this specific image. Again I'm choosing a very soft color scheme. Um, actually this was colored during the 30 day color challenge that went on in November and uh, the latest videos that I've been publishing was colored then. I got the images colored but I never got the cards made. So you can also see that on my nail polish. I will have a different nail polish when I'm coloring than when I'm creating the card. But uh, the reason why I'm saying that is because you will see that I'm using the same green color scheme that I used on my fairy the other day. And that is because 
because I kind of figured this green out and I kind of liked it and I liked the softness of it and um, also found that when I personally do the no line coloring going for a softer look or a softer color scheme actually brings brings those line a little bit more of a pop it kind of um, helps the softness of the image while when I'm using very strong colors um, those black lines you have otherwise when you just print them normally they kind of help uh, build up uh, those images but I, I really like the kind of sort of no coloring technique I think I'm supposed to have them even lighter but um, it's kind of nice still having something to go by I also added a little bit of a darker color scheme I'm using the G24 which was my darkest for my light greens as the lightest for my dark greens and then I am using G28 and G46 for the other shading colors so I'm going tone on tone here with uh, green stripes and green the rest of the colors uh, also to give a little bit higher contrast from the lighter parts I am actually filling first in with a G24 uh, because that will make a double layer of G24 when I'm done uh, to kind of get it to have a little bit of a darker tint than the G24 I have on the lighter green and also I don't really worry about having that as a uh, very even layer because I am blending on top of it fully so then the other colors will blend that out for me as the last detail uh, I'm doing her eyes because apparently I forgot <laughs> them and then I'm going in with some polychromous uh, color pencils and coloring the um, face kind of adding details in this case I'm using very very sharp pencils and then I'm using small 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 lines to kind of create that fur texture in her face so uh, kind of kind of like how she turned out she actually looks like a polar bear she's kind of cute I'm doing the same with the little creature but more over or the little teddy bear but more over actually just blending over him because I wanted to have a little bit more pop a little bit more dimension in him and then I am cutting them out with my EK success cutter B scissors and this is real time um, I'm not going to show you the whole clip but this is real time so this is how slow I'm going when I want to get a good line and usually I try to move the paper and let the scissors sit sort of still I kind of wiggle the scissors a little bit too but mostly moving the paper because it makes it um, a lot easier to get a cleaner cut when you're fussy cutting so now for the card for the card base I'm actually going to go for my standard A2 card size and I'm using some basil marshmallow and I'm cutting both of them down because I am doing a little frame so these are the same as the st stamps double stitched frame dies and they are the rectangular ones so or it's not a frame die it's a rectangular double stitch die but I'm creating a frame with it so I'm taking the biggest and the next two biggest uh, taping in them up with some tape and then I'm running it through my big shot which I have on the side on a, one of those log school wagons actually um, I have the top uh, of the parts upside down so you can have a flat surface you can put it on then I'm cutting uh, with the next two biggest um, die I'm cutting down a piece two pieces of this um, bokeh in the snow I think it's called book in the snow um, and I am cutting out one piece that is going to be kind of the snow part and then one piece that is the background then I'm using this lawn fawn die and I'm making sure that the cut is upwards because these 
only have the stitch details on one side and I want that to be on my snow hill. And then I cut it out and I have that little detail both around the edges and also over the snow bank to add a little bit more dimension actually. Uh, without that little detail you get a little bit of a flatter bend. It doesn't pop as much. Then I'm making the card base. I'm just scoring that half of a letter size card base in half at four and a quarter and then I am creasing it with the help of my Teflon bone fold which is awesome. It makes really good card bases. For the frame I'm cutting down my scotch 3m scotch foam tape i love this thing and i'm adding it to the sides i don't have to have a close fit because uh, i'm not going to do a shaker with the frame i just needed to fit so kind of stuck down so i'm leaving small edges here and there it doesn't really matter then i am i have put some um, tape on the back side of this and I'm just dropping it into that hole so that I have the background. I'm gonna add her there with again some foam tape. I'm just cutting my down um, with my scissors. I never had an issue with it gumming up my scissors but I do have a second pair of scissors now that I use for fussy cutting only and then this one that you see here which have a little bit of a tape on it is the one I use for basically everything. Then I'm cutting from the same paper or one more from that paper pack uh, of that uh, blue kind of snowflake with small stars paper and I'm taking that little middle part that I got from the frame and adding that on top of it so that the, um, the snowflake paper kind of frames that white piece I have something to write on. Here is a sticker sheet from the Doodlebug Designs. It's a Christmas sticker sheet but I do have a whole bunch of small snowflakes in this beautiful kind of tealish browns and greys. So I'm using them as a little accent detail. I'm also using a green one just to build up a little small detail in one of the corners so that the inside isn't just super plain. You could also kind of stamp on the inside or, or anything but I thought I had this sticker sheet and it works awesome. And then I'm just using some tape runner and adds this on the inside. I'm actually adding the detail in the upper uh, right corner because I thought that could look so cool. When we want a sentiment, so I'm using this uh, stamp set from Simon's Stamp and I'm using some pine ink, uh, this is memento ink, and I'm stamping the Merry Christmas sentiment uh, on the uh, little bit of cardstock to get a nice uh, sentiment. And then I'm cutting that strip out with my Fisker's cutter and uh, I am adding small flag ends on uh, each side of that sentiment so that it will go um, as wide as the card. So I'm actually measuring on the card to figure out where I need to do those cuts and then I'm just cutting up in the middle um, and then taking a cut from each corner up to that cut. That is the easiest way to make an even uh, flag end. And to finish it off, I am adding some foam tape to the, um, to the backside of the little flag. And then it is finished. And that is the card for today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you do, please thumbs it up. It means a lot to me. If you have any questions, just comment down below. Down below you can find all the details of the cards and links to my blog. So thank you again for watching and I'll see you later. Bye!